IP more on Webler Gun Mark TV. On test today, it's not a rifle, it's a non lead load, and it's Lapua's Naturalis, which is one of the first non lead bullets and ammunition types to appear in Europe. And now that we are getting on the non lead bandwagon, which foreseeably will see lead cord ammunition banned for shooting deer within the next few years. So it's something to consider. The Naturis is a little bit different in terms of what it looks like, because if, when we see the bullet in detail, it's, it hasn't got a flat nose, it's got like a, sort of a very angled pointed nose, and it doesn't look at all ballistically adept. And yet the BC, ballistic coefficient of the bullet, is a surprising 0.329, which I didn't expect until I checked it out. The poor is important for my Viking arms. For the test, I've got my trusty Mauser M03, and the round is in 6.5 by 55 Swedish, probably my favourite calibre. Not powerful, not big, but as I've proved myself over the years with this and other 6.5 Swedes, it does the business really, really well. Not a lot of recoil, it's a very nice cartridge overall. This is Naturalist in the middle, and it offers in 6.5, 55, a 140 grain bullet. As you can see, the bullet, quite straight shank, ogive virtually non-existent as such, but the top sort of rolls over into like a tiny pointed, it's basically it's a green nylon or green polymer plunger inside. But by comparison, this is a 6.5 or 55 Swedish, it's 123 game match bullet, and this is what we sort of come to expect. This, this is a classic Boto Hollow Point lead cord bullet. The majority of non lead rounds we see today, probably 90%, are of this type, what's called a monolithic hollow point or a monolithic hollow point slash ballistic tip. This is a ballistic tip. They are just a big chunk of copper. Some of them, like the barns, they have, should we say, pre cut weakened areas. So when they actually hit the target and expand, they open up into sort of three or four or five petals that stay with the bullet and it tumbles through during the damage. And then hopefully, because of the integrity of copper, it punches out the other side so you get passed through and the animal should fall. And if it runs, it leaves a better blood trail. The uh, monolithic hollow points are a bit like a sledgehammer. They just go through and do their business. Just by comparison, this is more high tech. This is an RWS Evo Green, which uses a two part tin core. The front part of the core is sintered. So basically, when it enters, the hollow point tip moves back and it literally blows the ogive apart just by the fact that the interior core is weakened. And then it breaks off probably just about where the neck of the case is. And underneath that is a, a harder tin core because it's got to be food safe. So tin's food safe, copper's food safe, which virtually does not expand. What it does do, it passes through. It leaves the small fragments to do the damage and it works through. So as you can see, this is quite a high tech round, but and, and the Naturalist, like say 90% of the others, is less of a high tech round. Whether what's better, I don't know. I've, I've used different sorts of non-lead and it seems to work as long as you put the bullet in the right place. Okay, now some facts and figures. It's been over the chronograph. I've shot a few groups with it. So from this end, I haven't taken it hunting yet. I'm going out this afternoon. Not sure how lucky I'll get. If I do, then I can factor it into the video. If not, then try again soon. Okay, so in 6.5 by 55, it is a 140 grain bullet, which is pretty much the standard weight loading for this caliber. I've shot a lot of deer with partition rounds, ballistic tips in 6.5 by 55, and it really does work. I mean, I've shot moose with it. I've shot big red deer with it. For a round that isn't producing massive amounts of energy or speed, it just does the business, which is excellent. Okay, so factory quotes, excuse me, I'm cribbing from my notes here because I haven't got a good memory. Factory quote is 2625 feet per second, which translates to 2,142 foot pounds of energy. Not too bad, really. Surprisingly enough, the actual energy figures I got for this was 2635 feet per second and 2158 foot-pounds. So if you just do the math, you can see that for a very rarely, the factory quote is not as high as what actually the gun did. And this is my MO3, the 22-inch barrel. 
and I was expecting it to be less. So that is impressive to actually have a round that exceeds what they tell us it is. The other thing about it was the extreme velocity spread was just 9.1 feet per second, which is also very nice. And the BC of the bullet is 0.329, which as I said before, is surprising because the bullet, as you, we've seen, doesn't look like it's got much BC about it. Being a monolithic hollow point, you would assume it would break up into petals that stay attached to the main core of the bullet and they just all tumble through doing the damage. Not so. Lepur have designed this and it, the bullet literally mushrooms. The front end expands, but it doesn't break up, it doesn't split. And uh, Lepur will say that they've done it this way so there's, there's no extra meat damage involved. And the whole uh, deformed bullet then just passes through, it expands and it passes through and, and, and does, does the business. On the point of expansion and energy, with any non-lead bullet, if it's of the monolithic hollow, hollow point type, velocity is a much more critical factor than with a, with, with a lead cord bullet because lead is very soft and you can really push the bullets not that fast and they will still expand massively because of the nature of the beast of lead. So what I have here is just a list of what I've, what I've, I'll go putting it through my ballistic calculator. Um, this is what I get, obviously. At the muzzle, we have um, 2158 foot pounds for 2635 feet per second. 50 yards out, it's 1941 foot pounds at 2499 feet per second. At 100 yards, it's 1703 foot pounds for 2367 feet per second. 150, 1558 foot pounds at 2239 feet per second. At 200, it drops to 1390 foot pounds for 2114, and at 250, it's 1236 foot pounds at 1994 feet per second. Lepur say it reliably expands down to quite low velocities, but in my experience with non lead, I really feel you need to keep the ranges closer, and that seems to be the general rule of thumb. Actually, wise, to be generous to it, the load shoots sub MOA at 100 metres. The only other thing is it comes in a cardboard packet with a cardboard liner, which I, I, I admire Lepur for being as green as they can because there's no plastic in there, nothing like that. But a little tip for you, if these boxes get damp or wet, then the cardboard just grabs hold of the, of, of the cartridge case and they're very hard to get out. It's, it's a minor thing. That's the Lapua Naturalis. It's another option in the non-lead arsenal, well worth a consideration. You know, get some, shoot it on the range so it feels. Remember to, the rules of non-lead, keep the range shorter, and bear in mind that velocity is the key to expansion, certainly with a monolithic hollow point. I hope you enjoyed that. So tell your mates if you did, support the website, and uh, it's me signing off, and if you need to speak to me about anything, it's the usual pmall.shootingsports at gmail.com. And I'll see you later. Shoot safe, have fun. Cheers. Cheers.